All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Money in the Law, my FM 101.3. Uh, with your host, Jay Marsden. He's from the Marsden Law Group. Yes. I'm John Drohan. I'm from Main Effort Financial, he, hence law, money, I mean, not necessarily in any particular order. And then, of course, there's Tom Harmon, who's from the Hollis and yes. Hub, yes. who uh, puts us all on, uh, puts us on TV, which... Puts us know. out in the world, out right. in the world. Right. He puts right. our image, beams our image globally. Uh, right after the show, right, and and so he puts on, but but of course, you know, just not to not to minimize the fact that we are on my FM one hundred one point three, and this right is here. where it all started, right here. You know, right. it's funny. A, a, a smart man one time said to me, "Without a sense of caring, local radio would be extinct. But with an unwavering commitment to community, local radio is immortal. 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 I think local. Words. Yeah. Did he say yeah. that? I think that's, that's funny. That's funny." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that as well. I've heard that. It's funny for those of you who can't see, and well, no one can see this because the nope. camera's pointing right. this way. Right. But right here, there is a quote from the immortal Tom McCall of the second. Tom two, uh, as they say. That is Tommy two. <laughs> Tommy two times. Tommy two times. Uh, <laughs> and that is exactly what he said. Uh, that, right. That this his commitment to community here on my FM one point three. Yes, that's right. That's right. And uh, and we've been we've been fortunate enough to kind of be a tiny like a tiny molecule of this and, and part a of a grain it, of sand on the beach on the beach that is local radio a grain of sand on the beach of immortality wow i mean we need to write this just, we, this is good i hope we're starting off on I the hope right someone's recording this we're i hope so, someone's recording this is this do we have this on tape <laughs> right let's go we need to review that tape some footage uh how are you i i i couldn't be better <laughs> I couldn't be better. I, I am on I, the edge of my seat. I was just saying to Tommy that uh, you are looking at the winner of the most improved golfer in the Bible Study Golf League per uh, the I, last two weeks. Did I hear that on ESPN? I think I, I might have caught Center. that on the way. I, I don't think in. it was the number one. It was like four or five. Yeah. 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 <laughs> on the yeah. Ocho? Yeah. yeah. That's right. On ESPN 8. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. Yep. So the most improved golfer. Yeah. Yeah, we had uh, a little. And this is uh, on your Tuesday night golf. Tuesday, right? Tuesday night Bible night. study golf league. We had a little. Uh, we had a little. Uh, little event. Award little, ceremony. Little, little, little competition going yep. on the last couple of weeks. We had a couple people in the hunt. Some, many of actually probably that you know. Mm -hmm. um, the, the late great uh, Ken Soares was the there. The late great <laughs> <laughs> Ken Soares is not late. You might <laughs> he's disagree with he's that. Still hanging uh, in there. Yeah, 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 he was there last was night. He, for was all he the in the running for most improved? He should have been. I don't, that's a great question. I don't know why he wasn't part of the uh, part of that uh, that. That campaign for who? Well, was he walks and talks it. like a ringer, right? Like he's like he's a player. Dude, he can hit the ball a country mile. He can hit the ball far, yeah, yeah. right? He gets a hold of it, get but out it, of the way. But yeah. does that's not all golf, right? No, I mean, he kind of you got to finish. Yep. He wears right? his clothes. He looks good. He wears the clothes. Yeah, yep. yeah, yep. He looks good when he plays. Right. But uh, yeah, so last night was kind of end of the season. We so who it all so up. who was in the running for this most improved? Who'd you? Who'd uh, you so be? Me, me, Kevin Diamond, Diamond, and the great John Barry. And John Barry, uh, oh. Deacon John Barry at St. Mary's. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. So yep. So he had a lot going for him. You know. <laughs> well, right. I mean, Jesus. You, one Jesus, would think. Jesus is his caddy. Right? One would think. Yep. yep. <laughs> Jesus is his caddy. Um, so the last couple of weeks, they were kind of pulling it together, and they were like, "You guys have actually put some time into the game this year. You guys have actually improved a little bit. We should, because they immediately create a competition. Right? We should create a little competition for right us. now. Right. So they were like, right "All right, now. we're going to close it out strong." Yeah. And so last night was the last kind of the last day of the season, if you will, the last official. Tuesday night gathering. And, so are you uh, done? You guys are done. The season's over. Yeah, now? I mean, I think we'll probably still play until probably daylight savings, because then it gets hard to play. Just unless, you're yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unless you're retired. Right, unless you know? you're unless you you got some time That's in the right. afternoon, That's right. early That's right. afternoon. Yep. 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 So uh, uh, well, congratulations. Well, thank you. Thank That's, you. Thank yeah, you. No wonder yep. you're yep. yeah, you're well, kind of on your game. You know, um, um, heavy lies the crown. So okay. you know, you <laughs> figure yeah. figure how it works out. Uh, I too am in a good mood yesterday. Uh, yesterday, because Tom and I got to see arguably one of the greatest girls soccer game in the history. He was telling me about it. Yep, yeah. bit, great. And and robbed at the end. Against, oh. Yep, Hopkinton coming in undefeated. Go and, and and the best thing about it was that Hopkinton had beaten Hollis. He tell you that no. and beaten Hollison earlier in the season, eight to one. Ooh. Eight to one. So Hollison's coming it's in a like grudge well, match. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like uh, yeah. I hope we don't get. I hope we, you know, don't lose by seven. Yep. Right. Yep. We lost by a touchdown. Oh. And uh, yesterday they just yeah it was, it was, they played a great game and uh, and Tom and I got to see it and my father in law of course so that that was fun nice but I'm I'm coming in somewhat heavy hearted today why well because because oh. our guy because right. and I think we need is to that, is that is that public I mean can we go is that public knowledge it's gonna be I, I think so I you know what I, think, I I well we're talking about our pal 
Yes. Ray Osher. Yes, the who, great Ray Osher. Who, was, who has been here since the beginning. Since the beginning. He has been steering this ship through the cosmos. So Ray Osher's career is taking him uh, to be bigger and better places. So he's, he's moving on from the My FM 101 family uh, and has been... He's the he's the voice. Yeah. Yeah, he, he is, is the yeah. voice of this radio station. So it's the golden throated. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. And, uh, and 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 you know, and as much as he's a part of, and as I said, we're a tiny part of my FM. But oh, as yeah. much as he's a part of the, of the radio station, he's been such a huge part of our of our show. Oh my gosh! Know? Yeah. Oh my and, gosh! And, Remember coming in here day one? Yep. Right. And not knowing nothing. And just from being nothing. completely in awe of Ray because he knew what all those buttons did. Yeah. And we were like, I don't know what any of these things do. I've seen these soundboards on TV before, but but far more than that is he he was like, all right. You guys have no idea what you're doing in what, behind those microphones. This yeah. is, and this, of course, is before my FM 101.3 was 101.3. That's right. This was, that's right. This was 1040. That's right. On the other side, on the, yeah, on the, on the dark the, side, the other right? dial. Yeah, yeah that's the, right. On the more we call it in the morning because it's AM. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yeah, that's right. On the that's morning right. dial. So uh, yes, yeah, so, so Ray's been here since the beginning. Yes. So uh, yeah. we're gonna miss him. You know, I know, I know Tommy's. You know, Tommy, you guys got to spend a lot of time together. He's. Uh, Always makes it fun, oh my God. right? He's Always a good makes man. it fun. He's a, good he's, he's a great man. So, best of luck to him. You yes. know, best of luck to him. And of course, you know, my FM's going to do fine. They're, you know, they're they're going they're going to figure yeah, this yeah, out. They're a group so of talented people here. So, yeah. and, and you know what? Change is good. Change is change, change is good. Is definitely yep. good. Change is good. So good for those guys. But like I said. We're gonna miss him. Yeah, we, we are. are. Yeah, we are. He makes us better. Yes, yeah. he does. He makes fun. Yes, he and, do. And when we when we do have our next musical, but I mean, which I thought was happening today, well, I, I did bring Carrie to set I did, in here. I did bring, bring, bring my around. guitar. Yeah, <laughs> I was in a rush. <laughs> I did bring my guitar, but you know, but for our next musical event, yeah. we'll have to deal with that. Maybe, maybe we'll dedicate it to him. I, or, I don't know, or maybe I don't. I don't maybe, know. Maybe we write a song. I don't know. There's I mean, I was working on. I was working on one. There's all kinds of options. I know, I was pretty much an E minor. Ray, yep. you know, like it's a little sad, a little yep. right, and that's as far as Those I minor got. Chords. Always as far minor. as I got with minor that. chords will bring a tear to your eye. All right. what, Always. All right. Um, so what do you? What's on your mind? We're in a little bit of a. We're, we're a little bit shorter show today. Yeah, we have actually we have an abbreviated show today because I believe there's a, some live action coming in behind us. Yeah. So they want us out of here in uh, 30 minutes, is yeah. what they told us. They yeah. Want us out of here. We so got time. It's a half a show today. We got so, plenty of time. So uh, half a show. So half a show. So we're, like, so we're only going to give you half the answers today. We're only give you half, <laughs> half the, the answer of the today. quiz. The rest of the time you're going to be on your own. That's right. We're going to talk about everything. Not give you the answers. We'll give you the answers next week. That that sounds that like a plan. That works. Right. That makes you. Come so what back. do you like? I don't know. What's on your mind? You got something? You thinking about something? I, I, you always, no, I, I, I do. I, I, I usually have something, you know, that I'm, that I, that I'm. I mean, one of the things that I wanted to talk about, and this is kind of a, this is this has kind of come up recently. We we're talking about, um, and it, and it has to do with like property, and has to do with, uh, you know, estate planning. You know, sure. the the estate plan is, is what happens when you have people. Let's say there's a there's a a, a good size estate or a, a, a sure. sizable estate. So. Yeah. And when I say a sizable estate, that means something that could potentially exceed the the federal state uh, the threshold. Oh my of, God! I can't believe you're thinking that because I'm thinking the same exact thing. Stop it! Get out of here! It's, Go ahead. You know Go you're, ahead. You're, you're just saying that. You're just no, teasing no, no, no. me. Keep going. You no. just come on. No, no, keep going. I want to. I do want to talk about this. Keep going. So, uh, so if if I'm in if I, if I'm in that situation, you know, lucky, good for well, good for me, and in, in that you know, we're I'm fortunate enough to have that yeah, kind of yeah, those kind of resources. Like, yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah. Um, and. And then, and then throw in the monkey wrench of if if I have that, and then you know the, the normal estate plan is just yep, everything gets kind of passed on to my heirs. But then what happens if there's a potentially like somebody if, if there's a divorce involved or there's or there's or there's some way I have to separate this estate a little bit more and it's a little bit more complicated. So I want to talk about kind of some of the. You know some of the things that you need to consider, especially when you're kind of in that level, because sure. you know when you're when you're not there. You know, and don't get me wrong, the state the the state death tax or the estate the Massachusetts state yeah. estate tax is always something you need to take into consideration, right? Well, you need to take into consideration. I, I don't think that you let it drive the bus completely, right? Right, because uh, we just actually my uh, my associate in my office and I just sat through a presentation talking about the $2 million exemption, because it's been in about a year, right? Yeah. And one of the things that came up was actually very, very interesting. One of the things that came up was, there were two things. 
uh, that I thought was interesting. Number one was property that does not live in Massachusetts mm. is not part of your estate for the Massachusetts estate tax calculation. And that's important, right? It is important for a lot of, especially, especially in the East Coast. We joke all the time, you know, up here in Boston, that is everything is Boston, Florida, Boston, Florida, Boston, Florida. Because yeah. a lot of folks just migrate down there for a whole host of reasons. And so if you own property that's outside of the, of the state of Massachusetts, that's not part of your estate. For, for purposes of the estate tax calculation. Now, what a lot of folks will do is they'll just say, well, you know what, let's, let's, let's take it out of the equ equation completely. I'm just gonna become a resident of Florida, mm. right? And they'll, they'll just, you know, they'll do 181 days a year and make themselves a full-time resident of Florida. Well, just to, just to be clear, just to, to clarify that. So you can't just say you become a resident of Florida or become a resident of New Hampshire. Like you have to live there. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. You can't. Yeah, you can't just fill out some paperwork. I mean, you yeah. gotta have a. You gotta have a residence. You gotta have a place to put your head. Yeah. You know, you gotta probably switch your voting down there. You gotta have switch your license down there. You can't have a license in two states. I mean, you really gotta. Right. You really gotta commit to it. Yeah, and especially if you're. You know, when it comes time to filing that. You know, you're. You're. Or filing your estate and, and yeah. figuring that out. You know, someone says, "Oh yeah, I live in Vermont," and blah yeah. blah blah. Yeah, you don't yeah. just make it up at the final hour. No. That's right. That's yeah. right. So you gotta. Right. You have to have. There has to be, like you said, you have to have some kind of kind of validation or, pr or proof that you actually did live down there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, and you got to, you know, it's got to be real, right? And, uh, and and that's what a lot of people worry about. They say, well, you know, how you know how, how do I make it real, right? Well, you, you, I mean, you got to live there. You, you got to like, you you make it real by making it real. That's right. That's, exa <laughs> that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, but the, but the, the conversation around the estate tax was that, you know, what a lot of folks will do is they'll talk about gifting. And they'll talk about, you know, how do I manage getting my estate down to $2 million? And when I gift and I want to gift assets away, that's, got, that's how I'm going to get there because they're running from the estate tax, right? Well, if you look at the tables and you look at the charts and you kind of get a ballpark idea of what your estate tax might look like, I think the number they were working off of on this presentation that we were sitting through was basically, you know, they kind of calculated at a back of the napkin number of about 10%, mm. right? So if, you're, if your estate is, you know, $3 million, you're going to pay, uh, you know, $100,000 in estate tax for, for that million that's over the $2 million, right? That's the number. Yep. The estate tax now accounts for everything that's over $2 million, yeah, right? so, that's and, the and, idea. and then you don't pay, and, and where it used to be, you'd pay tax on everything. You go if you, all if the you way back. It, that's yeah. right, all the way back yeah. to dollar. So that, and that's significant, right? That's 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 $100,000 versus $300,000 in your example of oh, the yeah. 10%. That's real money. Yeah, it's real money. It's real money. Um, but at the same time, how you're trying to get there could create some other concerns, mm, right? This is true. And and the idea was, you know, a lot of people, because of the way the uh, the gift tax is set up right now, you know, how you can literally give away more than the eighteen thousand, right? And mm. I, and I highlight that because a lot of people get that eighteen thousand dollar number in their head and they think, well, this is all I can give away. If I give Just away any more? Oh no! That's right. Someone's yeah. going to come knocking on my door, right? And yeah. that's not what happens. If you give away more than the eighteen thousand. All that happens is you have to file a gift tax return with your taxes, but nobody pays anything. You don't pay anything as the gift giver and the receiver. They don't pay anything either, right? So you just tell them that you did it. That's yeah. all. It and as long as and it just it accumulates on your exemption threshold, right? That's right. And, That's right. And, and brings down what your your estate tax threshold is. And that lifetime exemption right now on the gift giving is about thirteen million bucks, right? So unless you get fourteen million dollars to give away. You're probably in pretty good shape. You're gonna you're gonna be okay. Yep, and that's gonna change at some point down the road. That's gonna come back down. But in the meantime, people will use that as a way to kind of think about, okay, you know what? I want to get out of this whole gift uh, estate tax issue. I want to avoid that. But this is the thing that came up. That ten percent number that you might end up paying on, that ten percent number, is potentially a better deal than if you give money away. Because if you give money away, those people that get your property. They're getting the basis with that property. Remember, yeah. when you pass away and you inherit stuff or you give people through an inheritance, That's true. everybody gets a step up in basis. Yeah. And, All and the, the gain goes away. And we're talking about real estate basis. It's like, you, you know. You talk real estate basis, you talk mutual fund basis, you talk stock basis, you talk any basis you yeah. want. But what's going to happen is when you're giving <laughs> it away, golf, golf game golf basis, basis yeah. any basis you want. But if you give it away and you bought it for 50 bucks, the person that gets it, for calculating their gain down the road, their basis is fifty bucks. Yeah. If they inherit it and it's worth five hundred bucks, no gain, and yeah. that's a big deal because people are going to run. People are, and, and on top of that, so now they're potentially paying the capital, uh, the capital gains tax. Then they're going to pay the mass capital gains tax, and then they might have to pay the millionaires tax. Right. That's four right. percent. Yep. Right. So all of a sudden, you blow through whatever gains you thought you were saving 
by gifting this stuff away to avoid the estate tax, they're, you're just passing them a tax bill down the and, road. And again, let's be clear about this, okay? Uh, if I'm if I'm trying to avoid paying estate tax Correct. on my estate, what is the one thing that has to happen in order for me to generate an estate tax? Hmm. <laughs> I, I, hmm. Hang on. And hang it's, on. It's a little on. dark. Shout it out if it's you know little, it. I have to die. That's right. Right. That's right. So again, this is all just so my heirs, my you know, my the the people that are inheriting my, my estate. Loved ones. Yeah. Now, now, if let's say you and I were married, right? right? If you and I were married, and I passed away, then guess what? Guess how much estate tax you have to pay on my one hundred zillion dollars? Wait a minute. I think I know the answer to this. <laughs> Zero. Zero. So that estate tax doesn't happen between between married people. That's right. So this is all happening like after you pass away. After so you're both gone. Yeah, exactly. So yes. after after the, when the when both people that are involved, the, the, the husband and wife, in this case, husband and husband, yeah. they pass away, and then and then and so. And what Jay said is a great point because if you're like, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to save that estate money. That's right. You're trying to save, hey, listen, I'm trying to minimize the damage so when all the dust settles, you guys will have more money than, than you'll have you'll have all this money. And if you have to pay estate, and that's the thing is everybody gets so hung up on, on taxes when right? they go, oh, I have to pay this, I have to pay that. But if I hand you a a $5 million house that I that we purchased back in 1971 for $115,000, which was all the money we had. That's right. right? This was, uh, we paid 150 and we had a 14.5% mortgage and it's and just so happens to be sitting in this town called Chatham. Yeah, and right, right now, and it has a pretty good view of the water from, from most of the windows. From most of the windows. Yeah, right, and, and you know what? And we're kind of in this inlet, so guess what? You know what? With the dock, we, the dockage. We, we still have beach. Yeah, yeah it's weird. The frontage, all yeah, that stuff. There's, it's not not getting eaten away. I just we're, unlike those other guys who were on that island, they, they were like, hey, we're right. going to buy the one on the island, and right. So here we are, and I give we spent we we paid for this again. I'm going to go slow. If I paid a hundred thousand dollars for this house back in 1971, and I give that house to you, and the now the house is now worth five million dollars. If you sell that house the next day, because maybe you have to, maybe there's there's a lot of people that want to have some of that money, sure. then you are paying capital gains tax, capital gains tax on 4.950, oh, 4 yes. million dollars. Yes. $4.9 million. You're paying a capital gains tax. 15%, 20%, and then if you have the millionaire's tax involved, I mean, you're talking a cra way more than what you would pay from the 10% estate tax. That's right. That's like, right. like a, a, an ungodly amount more. So people, they try and get cute, and if you're talking to your, and your attorney and or your, or whoever your advisor, and they're, they're saying, oh, we, we got to really avoid it. Or maybe they sold it to you. Maybe they sold you, hey, listen, we're going to help you minimize your oh, estates. We'll get you under that. That's a great point. We, we have this conversation with clients all the time and they come in and we sit down and we talk about their planning and then based on the amount of money that we're working with based on the size of the estate if you will we ask the question so, so like i have to ask the question because it might be something you got to deal with first question i ask how do you feel about estate taxes and then they say to me well walk me through it yeah. and i'll say something along the lines of well first of all you're x years old yeah. so first of all we have lots of spending to do. Let's first let's start right there, right? You have a lot of living left, right? You're yeah. Not, we're not we're not crossing you off the list yet, right? <laughs> you got lots of living to do, so you got lots of spending to do, right? Your business 100% is based on life is expensive, save for it now, right? Mm -hmm. So so you take care of that. So let's worry about that. So whether or not you have a problem, we're we're not really sure. That's the first thing we talk about. And then the second thing we talk about is I don't know where the tax law is going to go. Right? I don't know who's going to win this election. I don't know who's going to lose that election. Right. Because I don't that know. changes. I, it cha it, it, all the time. It's, a, it's, a, it's almost like a cyclical thing, yep. right? Yep. So that's going to happen. And and lawyers love when that happens because then it kind of gives us a reason to be like wicked smart again. And like, oh my God, guess <laughs> oh, what? Oh, didn't Things you hear? You didn't yeah. hear about the big changes. Yeah. The massive state calls, tax, right? Yeah. Oh my God, I got a reason to call people. Guess what? Right? Guess what, <laughs> right? So, so but, but you know what? In, in your defense, for all the right reasons, yes, right? Yeah, yes. it's, it's, it's good. If your lawyer calls you to, to advise you of this new estate tax law change, you're like, yeah, that's good. That's yeah, cool. That's right? Right. Because the lawyer that doesn't call you, you're going to be like, caught, like well, why didn't you call me? That's why didn't right. you tell me why'd about you give this? Me heads up? Why'd you give me a heads up? Oh, they communicate to you in some way, right? So they, they let you know, right? So that's, that's part two. And then part three is what you just said. First of all, do we even care? Right, because people will say all the time, "Well, how do I avoid the Massachusetts estate tax?" Right. Well, the answer is don't live in Massachusetts. That's yeah. one way. That's one way. That's one way. But the other option is, well, do you even care? And yeah. then they kind of look at me a little funny and they say, 
What do you mean do I even care? And that's exactly the explanation we give him. I said, look, first of all, you'll never write this check. No. You will never write this check. And neither will your spouse, yeah. right? They will never write this check. I said, let's, let's just, let's be very upfront about that issue right there, right? Not something, okay, tell me more. And then we'll say, and so ballpark, this is what the number might look like. Your kids will write it, assuming you don't start spending like you should be spending, but your kids might write it. And this is what it might look like. And do you care? And what we'll say to people is a lot of folks have come in and they've said, you know what, Jay, I'm leaving them X amount of dollars. They're way ahead of the curve compared to where I was at that stage of the game or that where I will be, they will be when I'm not around, right? Because they're inheriting a pile of money. My interest is on simplicity and my interest is on making this as administratively easy to do than all of this other stuff. Because to have a more, to, to avoid the estate taxes, you need to have a more complicated estate plan. Mm. And oddly enough, most folks have said, you know what, Jay, I, now that you've explained that to me, I don't care about it as much as I thought I did. I would much rather have it easy for my kids after the fact to kind of wrap things up. Let's do that. Let's focus on that, at least for now. And yeah. then, we'll, and then we'll, we can always shift gears later on down the road. Yep. Right. And, and at that point in time, you kind of war game it out. You yep. say, okay, and you say, right, but this is one potential th- This is one potential a- course of action that could happen. And say, all right, so if, th- if it happened and, and, and it went like, you know, like in 20 years or 30 years, here's where we're at, they'd have to pay X amount. Of, and it would come from this particular Comes from this money. Yeah, this they're, particular not, they're not money. reaching in their pocket to pay the money. You have ideally left the assets behind. Now, whether it's liquid assets or real estate assets, that's a different story, right? If, you're, if, you're, if your estate is very heavily weighted towards real property, right? The kids might have to either sell a piece of property or come up with some type of loan arrangement, get some type of, you know, HELOC or something like that to pay the bill because your bill is due nine months after you die. That's when they want the estate tax and, return filed. And, and this is, and your estate lawyer is going to talk you through this. He's going right. to say, hey, listen, all right, well, you know what? All you own are these two pieces of property. So let's kind of play this out. And then you got, and you have $200,000 in the bank, but you own, you know, you own two houses. You own a house in Holliston and you own a house in Chatham, right? Yep. And if you guys were to pass away, or let's say, let's say that you were, you had to go to some sort of long-term care situation where the, and Oh, oh, by the way, if that's the and we've put these houses into uh, we've we've done our state planning in the sense that we put these houses. You're not leaving these houses. You right. want to leave them for your kids, so we put them into an irrevocable trust. Five year clock starts. So so those are going to be out of your state should you get into a long term care. My what I'm getting to is let's say you spend all your money. Sure. Let's say you spend it for whatever reason. You spend it because you 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 you're, you're in a long term care situation, or you spend it because you feel like you got a hot hand at Mohegan Sun. Whatever yeah. the reason. Yeah. Yeah. You spend all your money and you pass away and your estate gets settled and all you got are two, you know, you have $4 million worth of real estate, yep. right? And guess what? If that's the case, then your kids are, like Jay said, your, your kids may, are going to have to come up with that money, right? Yep. And, and, and one of the ways, and, and, and you kind of know your, so one of the ways could be they could just go to their own checkbook and be like, oh, what's the estate tax? And we're inheriting these $4 million worth of real estate. Well, everybody writes a check for, for you know, $15,000, whatever. Yeah, whatever yeah. Yeah. So everybody writes a check and, and that's how we're going to do it. And you know what? When we talked about this on the, on the show before, if you're like kind of let them in on it and say, hey, here's the estate plan, guys. Right. Here's what we came up with. We don't have any other means to kind of generate c- cash. So you guys may get the same. And guess what? If you do, here's, here, here's what your Uncle Jay says you can do. You, potentially, you could take a loan, or you could take a home equity line, or you could register. But this is what's this is what potentially could happen right. down the road. Well, and let's talk about what's going on here too, right? I mean, it it this is not a static play, exactly, right? Somebody's inheriting exactly four million dollars worth of real estate that could be worth six million dollars in two or three years, right? So now now this starts to feel less like a tax and more like an investment, yeah. right? Because the money ideally. The money that you're getting is not just going to sit, right? Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you inherit three million dollars from your from your parents, two million dollars from your three million dollars from your parents, and you got to write an estate tax check, handled correctly, you know, money makes money, right? So that money is going to now be invested somewhere. It's going to end up in a portfolio. The portfolio is going to generate more revenue, and then you're going to start to sort of make back the estate tax money 
in a hopefully, you know, depending on the market performance, yeah. there's no guarantees there. I get that. But this is this is not I wrote the check and then I just got something, right? Yeah. You wrote the check, you got something, and the something you got is going to start making you more money. Yeah, and the other side of that is even if you did it, that's right. I mean, you, you, you're going to get something and then you can do some, whatever you do with it, yeah. and that's up to you. But yeah, the bottom line is you're getting something. This, right. is, this is essentially found money. Well, right? it's found money. I was just talking to somebody the other day, and they were telling me about a local institution around here that's got a 5% seven-month CD, yeah. right? Hey, guess what? We just had to write a check to pay the estate taxes. Son of a gun. Yeah. And then we got all this money from mom and dad, and then I dropped it into a 5% CD, and seven months later, I got half yeah. back that I just paid on the estate. I mean, like, let's, you know, again, this is not something where you write that check and it doesn't do anything for you, yeah. right? And then the other option is there are very simple options to avoid this issue. One of them is, we talked about the gifting issue. There's a tax problem there. You gotta think through that issue. But then the other issue is, what you see a lot is, the very simple, not a lot of moving parts to it is, people will go out and buy a life insurance policy. Well, that's the easiest answer, right? Well, or one of, one of these. If, if you're an insurance agent, yeah. that's the easiest <laughs> that's the answer. answer. That's the only answer. That's the only answer. That's right? the only That is, that's the, the, only that is the only hammer that you're going to need. And that's that's right. the only tool in your toolbox. I only have right one there. thing in this that's toolbox. That's right. And you yep. know what it is? It's a permanent life insurance policy. Yep. It doesn't matter. So you die 10 years from now, 100 years from now. This is going to pay but out. You, but, you can, but you can do the math, right? You, you yeah. do the math and you say, look, I think the estate tax liability is going to be $500,000. Yeah. I'm going to call my insurance agent, who's going to literally get out of bed and run down here in his <laughs> nightgown, yeah. right? Uh, Pen in uh, hand. I'm leaving, right? I'm, I'm leaving Boca Raton right now. <laughs> I'm on the first flight out of here. I'll be right back, right? Can, you, can we do Zoom? Can, we do Zoom? can I do Zoom on a plane? Yes. I, yeah. Don't Pardon yeah. me, Pardon yeah. me, folks. This is going to be a little bit annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you, then, you, then you go out and you say to yourself, that's the easiest thing to do, right? You buy yourself a life insurance policy. You tell the kids, hey, guys, every year I'm writing a check for this premium, right? With full, yeah. We'll talk about the details later, but I'm going to... I'm going to pay this so that you don't have to worry yeah. about. Or if you really get crazy, if you really get crazy, because remember we talked about if you have property that you want to keep, right? Okay. And you have this, and 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 we've, we've talked about on the show, you have this, an irrevocable, irrevocable trust, right? So, or and you have the, and you'll oftentimes you'll put your property into said irrevocable sure trust. Yep. And when you do that, then technically, the property no longer belongs to you. Correct. It belongs to the trust, right? That's right. So. Uh, as we describe what a trust is, a trust is nothing more than a box that I put stuff in, right? Yep. Yep. So you know what else I can put in that trust? I can put some money in yes, that trust. Yes, I can. Right. Yes. So let's say I'm we're fortunate enough, and we know, and and this is this is like next level estate planning. If your parents do this, then your parents are this is a home run, right? <laughs> they say, hey, oh by the way, we're having the meeting, right? We're saying we're going to talk sure. about mom and dad's estate plan. Everybody's feeling good, right? Ding ding ding. I might have had too much drink. Do you know what I have? And dad gives the speech, right? And what they may do is they may say, hey, we put the, the, how, the, the Chatham property into the irrevocable trust. So if we ever are in a long-term care situation and we happen to spend all of our money, sure. then that is going to be protected. Tell you what else we're going to do. Mom had the CD that just matured. We're going to put this CD of $200,000 in said same irrevocable trust. Because you know what? We're never going to use this. We're not going to use this money. And we're, money. Yep. Nope. And we're going to use this money for when when we both go, when we, right? Yep. And, and mom's like, when we, yeah, that's going to be a long time, right? When we both go, there's going to be money in there to do whatever you want with it. Now, sure. Now, it's going to be yours. You guys are the beneficiary. You can do whatever you want with it. What I would do were I you is you are going to may incur a little bit of a Massachusetts estate tax. Sure. So that might be something you want to consider. Yeah, that's exactly right. And there right. you go. Right, and then and 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 then it's like, what you know? That's a mic drop at that point. That's right. That's right. You're a superstar, and you're thinking ahead. And again, this conversation happens. We always tell people these are lifestyle conversations, right? This is not necessarily age based, right? Yeah. This is a conversation that says, you know what? Your mom and I have lived a very, very fulfilling life. We're good. We've done everything we wanted to do. We've been able to amass a little bit of a war chest here. And the expectation is that- Your children you know, haven't totally disappointed us. That's no. right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All that all that passive aggressive mom and yep. dad love coming your way, yep. right? Coming at you. You've been- Both barrels. You, you've been nowhere near the disappointment to me that I thought you were going to be. <laughs> right. Okay? Yep. And that's the right. The ceiling was low. Right? You've exceeded. You, said, yep. Why yeah. are you so mad? I don't understand this tension, <laughs> right? So you And you get to say, look, now we need to start. This is the third- evolution of your estate plan, right? Mm -hmm. The first evolution was, 
I got some kids. I'm worried about them. I got a whole bunch of life insurance. And I need somebody to take care of those kids and babysit that money if something happens to me. Step one. Then you had version two. The kids are big. You're getting old. A couple of gray hairs starting to show up. You're slowing down a little bit. Your fastball isn't what it used to be. Now the kids can be part of the plan, right? My kid can be my backup health care proxy. My kid can be my backup power of attorney because they're borderline responsible at this point and they haven't, you know, we haven't killed each other yet and everything's cool. And but you're still in spending mode. You're still in like, Ooh. you know, I, I, I'm spending money. I just, maybe I just retired. Maybe I'm going to retire. We don't know where our forever home is going to be yet. We're trying to figure it all out. We're trying to kind of figure out where we end up. Great. That's going to be version two of your estate plan. Bring the kids in, probate avoidance across the board, but it's still yours. You stay in control of it. And then boom, version three that you just laid out, which is, guess what? Ding, ding. We, fi we figured out, we think we've won the game. Yeah. Right? We don't have massive spending coming. Our lives are pretty routinized at this stage of the game. You know, traveling's traveling, but you know, we're no, no bike trips through Vietnam. No one's hiking over the, the Great Wall of China. I mean, this is it. It's pretty low key at this point, right? Yeah, we the can Vietnam kind of, bike trip sounds, yeah. That's great at maybe, 25. Maybe. 85, it's different. It's a different trip, <laughs> it's right? It's a different bike. It's a different trip. Yeah. <laughs> that seat doesn't feel as cushy. <laughs> so, so you got to start thinking about, okay, yeah, now it's about creating our legacy. Now it's about setting up the grandkids. Now it's about paying some college tuitions. Like this is the next version of this plan. And this is where you get into the, okay, well, do we have an estate tax problem? I don't know. Let's figure it out. Let's do some math. Yeah. And then let's figure out what happens. You know, we talk to clients all the time and we say, look, do you guys need to inherit each other's IRA? And they look at me like, can you imagine? What do yeah, you mean? You got to get some notarized. <gasps> They're aghast. That. What are you talking yeah. about? I said, well, look, you know, she's got a million dollar IRA. He's got a million dollar IRA. Do they need your million dollar IRA on top of this? Maybe we skip this step. Maybe it doesn't go right to the to the to the to the spouse. To the, to the spouse. Maybe it goes to the kids at this point. Because guess what? They could probably use it, right? They could, or they could use it, and then they could get their own critical mass going, they get the investment happening, they get things moving along, and you don't have to worry about, I'm just creating a big asset that the That's state's true. gonna reach in and take a big chunk of, let's start doing this. Not That's only, do they, not only could like. they use it, they have to use it in 10 years. Yes, so they guess do. guess what, so this, it's not like some Well, of, they don't have to use it, they just gotta move it out of the IRA into their brokerage account. Well, they gotta take it out. That's, they right. Gotta, yeah, That's they gotta, right, but they don't have to consume it is my they, point. No, they don't, no, no, you're right. Right, yeah. and I say that because we've joked on this yeah. show before where people come in and they're like, yeah, I gotta take my armor. It's like, the, it's like they're standing in your office with $45,000 in their hand in bag. waiting for you in to tell them bag. where should I go spend the money. <laughs> John, will you give me a ride down to the car dealership? Go. I got this first things first. RMD in my pocket and I gotta do something with it. No, you don't. How do I turn this $45,000 into a cashier's check? Well, that yeah. could raise a few funds. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Nope. You could just put it in your other account. Uh, Wait a minute, what do you mean? No. It's not spend it. You yeah. can, you sure but it's can. not spend it. So this is, you know, you have to really kind of think through these things. All right, we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll wrap it up. We have done a break, yeah. Quick, quick break and then we'll quick wrap break. it up. All right. We'll be up, hey, we'll be back, my FM. No, no, we'll, we'll be right back. Yeah, quick well, but break. take us out. We'll do the right. takeout. We part. will be. We will. Don't go away. We, we're we're trying to. This is like a. This is like you know speed dating right now. Like we, we have to get through this. So we have to do one break because we haven't done one. One break and then we're going to come back because we have to wrap this up on our early show today. Perfect. We'll Love be it. right back. Got it. And we're back. My FM one hundred one point three. Jay Marsden. I'm ready to go. Marsden. I, I, I think we told everything. Everything we needed to say. John Drohan, man, for financial. Tommy, right here. Tommy's keeping us on. Keeping us on the on clock. Top. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. like it. I love it. I love it. Keeping like us. It. Keeping us. Uh, on on uh, on the path here. So so today's the message. The, the 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 message of today's sermon is that you you don't don't get hung up on on the. I mean, consider it, talk about it, sure. figure it out, yeah. build it into your plan. But don't let, as we've said it a thousand times, don't let taxes wag the dog on things that you do. Particularly in this case, particularly in this case, because the the fact of the matter is, when you leave your estate, it means you have left this. You, you have know, left the you building. Have, you have shuffled off your mortal coil. That's right. That's right. So so again, you're you're one hundred percent right. Is it something you ignore? No. No. Nope. Is it something you talk about with your advisors? Yes. Is it something that you kind of put in its proper context? Absolutely. And 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 understanding. Okay, if I'm if this is something that really keeps me up at night. There are options. Do something about it. There are options, and I have to be willing to accept those options. And, and I say that because we find this all the time where people will, when we start this discussion, and then we start to say to them, well, two things. Your estate plan is going to be more complicated, which, by the way, also means your estate plan is going to be more expensive, and it's going to require a little bit more babysitting on your part. 
And that's when people start to say, but I thought we were going to make things easy. Well, well, we can make things easy, but easy is dependent on, you know, what, what's important to you. You're the client. We, we take all our direction from you. What is the most important thing that you're worried about? If it's taxes, then we build a plan around that. If it's not, and you understand the actual implications of not necessarily caring about it as much as maybe your friends and colleagues do, then it's a different story. And that's really what you want to think about. And, and, and you, you, that's the thing is you're not, you're not ignoring it. No, you know, and no, we, not really, You don't ignore anything, really. Nope. And that's, that's, that, that's, the, that's why you'll talk to somebody and why, why you'll kind of get, you know, you'll, you'll sit down and really think about it because you're not going to ignore anything. You may choose to say, well, I'm not going to do anything about that. I may, I may make that, but I'm not ignoring it. No, right? I'm not, not at all. I'm, I'm considering it and I'm saying, okay, guess what? Or, and it's the same thing with it. Like, you know, when you talk about buying insurance, like you buy, you know, house insurance or homeowner's insurance or life insurance or any, you know, you're like, well, this could happen. This could happen. You know, there's, there's a thousand different things that you can get insurance for, but you're not going to do it all because the, the likelihood of something happen is far less than something else. Well, right? you're going to play the probabilities game, right? Yep. And then the other part of that is like, life, life insurance is a perfect example. You're going to say, well, just like I don't want to deal with the estate tax, you're going to say, I don't want to deal with the repercussions of my family having nothing if something happens to me. The probability is it's probably not going to happen, but understood. Now, to solve that problem, you have to make your life a little more complicated. Right? Could do. You've got to find an insurance agent or you go online, however you're going to do it. You need to figure out what you're going to do. You need to fill up some paperwork. You need to have a physical, you know, you're going to yeah. do some stuff. And then you're signing on for a 20-year payment. I, I'm, right? I'm, la I'm laughing just because the old finder insurance agent. Yeah. I'm wondering, I, I'm, I'm, I know how I would do that. As you know, how, like when you drive by the tax guys like the, and you have the Statue of Liberty and they're like, you know, it's file yeah. your tax here. I would just go stand on that corner right there with this, and I would just say, I need life insurance yeah. and see what happens. And then... <laughs> and then like, and then, like on D-Day, a plane <laughs> flying over your head, and people just parachuting that's out right. in that's suits, right. in yeah, suits, and pens. Airborne Corps. That's right. That's right. That's <laughs> suits, right, and shoots. You come, that, yeah, and, and, and a in briefcase, hand. Yep. in hand, yep, yep. a pen, and a hand, and a laptop. To and one of those briefcases that, fold, that that pops onto a table, they <laughs> pop it up, and it's a table and a printer, and application right on it, right, and yeah. a Wi-Fi. So, yeah. so, so yes, think about it. Talk about making your life more complicated. Think about whether or not it's worth it, and then decide if this is the path you want to go on. And then if it is, have a conversation with your advisors. Let have a conversation out. with your advisor, as you do. And if you're, talk and to, if smart, you're looking, right, talk right, to smart people. Yep, moneyinthelaw.net. You get the, if you want to see some advisors, there, there you, go. you go. All right. Um, all right. One thing I want to say, I, so uh, the hair brought to you, part of the hair brought to you by, you know, like you said, when they run the credits at the end, yeah. is uh, by uh, Simino's Barbershop, right? Oh. Uh, uh, and my man, Joao Souza. So uh, this haircut just came from Joao, fresh, right? who fresh. is the official barber of Money in the Law. Nice. I'm going to have to uh, go see him. And I just want to say a shout out. Yeah, they had a loss in their family, and he was just telling me this. I just came from there. Uh, so I just want to say my heart goes out to my buddy Joao. Thoughts and uh, prayers. Yeah, they have, a, they have a, you know, a big, they're all, uh, he's Portuguese, for originally from sure. Portugal. So they have this big, port, all these, and they're all friends and yep. family. And, and so so he's uh, he was a little down today. So right. I just well, want to thoughts and prayers to him and family. About you. All right. So, uh, stay tuned. Next week yeah, is going to be week, great. Back. Next week we're going to have a full show. Uh, no Ray, but that's okay. The the the, the stool, the, the triumvirate, the, the, the triumvirate the is tree. still here. Yes. All yes. right. We'll see everybody next time. On behalf of Jay Marston, have he's a great from week. Mars Law, and I'm John Drouin. We'll see everybody next time on Money and the Law. Have a great week, everybody. Take care.